Hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Sandra, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can start your own online boutique. Since COVID starting, a lot of people have started um, online boutiques. So have I, and the process was so, so confusing for me starting, because I didn't really have a mentor. I tried to watch some YouTube videos, but they were not covering everything in the order that I needed it to be. So I really struggled a lot, but I finally figured it out and I'm here to hopefully make things a little easier for any of you that are considering starting an online clothing boutique. Now, my boutique is called Zydie Field and I changed that name from previously Feminine Fashion Guide. So step number one, find the name for your company. Now, this seems pretty simple when you think about it, but it's actually quite complex. You have to think about your end goal. What products are you going to be selling and who are you selling them to? Is it just men? Is it just women? A big mistake I made was naming my company Feminine Fashion Guide uh, in the early stages because, you know, I like female style and I thought, you know, my customers were mostly women. However, as the business grew, I got a lot of uh, comments from men kind of asking where the men clothing and quite frankly, I grew up with a brother who was quite stylish. So I, I've had the pleasure of watching men fashion as well. So I'm not an expert uh, per se as much as I am with the female fashion, but I would say I have a pretty good idea of what looks good uh, with men and you know what are like the standard or um, kind of like what garments are the main pieces or masterpieces that can kind of be recycled to make different outfits. So I have that general idea. And initially I wasn't thinking big enough and my name was Feminine Fashion Guide. So it's pretty hard to incorporate no fashion when your name is Feminine Fashion Guide. So I ultimately had to change the company name to Zydie Field. Another key thing to think about is Google searching. When somebody types your company name into Google, are you going to show up? That means you have to choose something unique. Uh, for instance, me choosing Zydie Field, it's a Swahili word, but when you search me in Google, I'm the first one to pop up because I'm the only one with that name. So if I, if I don't have a business card with me, but write it down for somebody, Zydie Field, and they go to Google, I'm the first one that's going to show up. My social medias, my... Um, website and all that stuff. So choose our unique name because it helps you promote your boutique a little easier than um, choosing a very popular name that everybody has. And uh, it, it takes a while to build up the reputation uh, for you to pop up in Google searches in the top five or even to make the first page. So that's another thing to think about when you're considering your company name. I took some notes here so that I don't forget. Another thing, step number two, is to think about what type of business you want to run. Be a wholesaler? Do you want to be a retailer? Or um, do you want to be your own designer? And I'm just going to do a brief overview of each. You can do more research. But basically, wholesale, you're buying directly from the factory. You know, maybe you're ordering things from China or drop shipping, and you're selling them to retailers. Wholesale, you're buying directly from the manufacturers, the factories. And for this, your prices are not as high, but you have an advantage because you're selling in bulk. Uh, and then retailers, retailers, you're buying from wholesalers or you're buying directly from the manufacturers. Of course, it's cheaper to buy from the manufacturers versus having a middleman, the wholesaler. But sometimes if you're not very familiar with the factory and what kind of garments they make, it's not safe. So it's better to have a wholesaler in between. But then the prices are not as, um, as 
wholesale as you would like them to be. So for instance, uh, maybe this dress could be, let's say $15 per dress, which seems pretty good, uh, but then you have to buy maybe six dresses, you know, two smalls, two mediums, two larges. So that's that, but once you get it, you can mark up this dress, and of course packaging goes a long way, and you know, all of that, and if it's a good quality. So there's definitely room for profit. And then lastly, being a designer. Designer means you make your own fashion designs and you reach out to a company or somebody that you know who's able to sew and they sew them for you and then you can uh, sell them. And for that, you can mark it up. Uh, you can mark up the prices because it's your brand. So I guess being a designer is like having your own uh, brand. A little pros about being a retailer, like a reseller. Uh, it's a little easier because the calls are already made. You basically choose the designs that you want, and those are the ones that you're selling. You're not having to, you know, be artistic and creative and try to figure out what's going to sell, what your customers like. You basically just buy, it's already made, you take it. However, everything comes in specific quantities, so you can overbuy, and you know, if they don't sell very well, then you're left with a lot of inventory. Uh, but other than that, it's okay. And then pros of being a designer, despite the fact that it's a lot of work, um, it's a good thing because you do your own labeling. So that's an advertisement pro um, right there. And then you have more control about the amount that's produced. For instance, if you uh, partnered with a, like a sewing shop, you can tell them, you know, you provide the fabric and tell them how many of each to make that way you're not overproducing and if people over if people order more then you're able to tell them to make more but the catch to this is sometimes you're out of fabric or um, you don't have enough fabric and whatever so definitely pros and cons but it's it allows for better supply and demand control so those are some pros Tip number three, register your business. This is probably the most costly step there is. Depending on what state you live in, there are different regulations about registering your business. For instance, um, I live in, in Washington state. I live in Seattle. And here, when you register a business, you either have to choose if it's like a private corporation or LLC, and you pay a certain amount of money. Here, I believe mine cost me 700 and something dollars, maybe $750. So you register your business, and then you apply for a reseller's permit. A reseller's permit is what allows you to purchase things wholesale uh, from the wholesalers or from the manufacturers. So that's a very big step right there. You have to make sure you do it right. And it's helpful if you have clearly thought about step number one, because that means you don't have to change it. You don't have to change the name on the business license again. Also, the address that you put on the business license matters if you are the type of person who moves from one city to another. Every time you move, you have to reapply, you know, for uh, extension to do business in another city. So, like, when I started my business, I was living somewhere else, and I had a different business name. And then halfway, I moved to another city, and then I changed my business name. So I had to pay a fee for that. Um, thankfully, it was not too expensive. I had to pay $48 to change all the paperwork again. But it's definitely a delay and frustration. So make sure you get everything right to begin with. And on my paper here, step number four, I have to get a website. Now, you can either build a website from scratch uh, for example, there's, um, you know, like software developers who can help you create your own website, or you can create your shop 
on a host server. So like Shopify, Wix, and uh, Squarespace, all of those platforms allow you to have your shop. My boutique is on Shopify, and the Shopify is great. It has a lot of free themes, which are, you know, good. They help me get organized. Every couple of months, I change the theme up just for a refresher, which is great that I'm not stuck to a website that looks the same all the time. So depending on what inventory I have and how I think it will be best presented uh, to my customers, I change up the themes to keep it exciting. So Shopify is great for that. However, they do have monthly fees or you can pay yearly, depending on what you want, but definitely the, the options are endless. And step number five, order your products. So if you're ordering from wholesale, there are a few websites. Personally, I've shopped from LA Showroom. And with the LA Showroom, you know, you register. And then before you're able to buy anything, you have to um, verify your account. You know, they, they want to make sure that you're actually a legit business. So you have to submit your documents. You submit a business license as well as a uh, reseller permit. And that is what allows you to buy clothes at a wholesale discounted price. Basically, you're not paying taxes, which is great. So, yeah, the leisure room. There is another one called Orange Sunshine. I don't shop on it very much, but I've looked. And there are so many more. But for the majority, I'm a leisure room kind of girl. That's where I, I find all my stuff. So, that's that. And step number six here, I have advertise. Advertising, advertising is a huge, huge part in making your business a success. And by advertisement, I'm talking about business cards, all your social medias, you know, um, especially Instagram and Snapchat, because in your early phases, it's actually your friends and family members that will buy from you before the world knows of, you know who you are so use all your social medias facebook is great and with this i'm going to mention facebook manager because nobody told me that before but i can speak for shopify you can link your shopify to facebook manager and instagram which facebook manager uh kind of gives you the statistics of your shop it tells you what products are being viewed the most. It tells you um, what, I guess it helps you identify what problems that customers might be having. It kind of shows you how many people search the product, but also did the product make it to the cart and how many people abandoned their cart. Just a lot of good statistics that as a business owner, you can sit back and reflect on and think, is it the price? Is it the taxes that's uh, making people not finish their purchase? That way you're able to make some changes in order to increase sales. There is make your first sale. And again, it's probably going to be a friend, a family member. Um, those are the seven tips I would give to anybody who is thinking about starting an online boutique. It's definitely a little rough in the beginning, but don't get disappointed especially if you have the passion for it. Um, just take it day by day and keep putting yourself out there. Keep promoting yourself because somebody is watching, somebody's listening. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. I will be more than happy to respond. And let's be friends. I'm on Instagram at Zaidi underscore field. I'm on Facebook, Zaidi Field, and my boutique is zaidifield.com. Please check us out. And yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely day and congratulations on hopefully starting your business soon.